done. Being the appointed hour, I call to order the New Bern Historic Preservation Commission. May we have a roll call, sir? Yes. James O. Woods. Present. Peggy Broadway. Here. Tripp Urick. Here. Ruth Cox. Present. Kristen Evans. Here. Ellen Sheridan. Here. George Brake. Here. Uh, Jim Bisbee is absent, and Joe Klotz is as absent. We have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Do I, I call for a motion to dispense with the readings of the minutes? So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All of those opposed? None. The motion passed. The Historic Preservation Commission is a public commission appointed by the City of New Bern's Board of Aldermen. It is responsible for preserving and safeguarding New Bern's locally designated historic districts, downtown and Riverside, based on U.S. Department of Interior standards, state statutes, city ordinances, and New Bern's historic guidelines. Two of the major tasks of HPC include approving applications for a certificate of appropriateness and preventing demolition of historic structures due to neglect. The HPC holds a quasi-judicial hearing on an application for a COA of appropriateness. The Commission hears sworn testimony and evidence provided by the applicant, by parties who receive notice of the hearing, and by others who can justify that they have relevant evidence and are directly affected by the application. The Commission cannot consider comments based on personal likes or dislikes, hearsay, or personal opinion that cannot be directly related to specific historic guidelines. Likewise, Commissioners shall refrain from stating personal opinions, personal likes or dislikes, or hearsay during a hearing. The Commission's decision on an application is based solely on testimony and evidence presented at a hearing that directly relates to the historic guidelines. This is a special called meeting this evening uh, for an agenda item that has to do with the historic guidelines and a new development pattern. Uh, there are no COAs on the agenda tonight. The only item is this looking at these uh, historic uh, guidelines that uh, we have reviewed earlier this week in design review. So all of the issues that have to do with COA do not apply because none will be reviewed tonight. So the first item on the agenda, on the new business, because we've had roll call and we've had the introduction, this is the new business. Discussion and potential action to adopt revisions to the historic district guidelines to add a new development pattern and other related text changes. So I think each of the commissioners uh, that are here have been to the design review meeting on Monday of this week where we discussed uh, the new development pattern uh, that we are wanting to include in the guidelines and looking at several other items within the historic guidelines that uh, have to do with this new pattern. So we each, I believe, have a copy of what we discussed on Monday. Is that correct? Everybody has a copy. Yes. You've looked at it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So the new developmental pattern called narrow stitch is what we discussed on Monday. And then we have a uh, new uh, a revision in 2.6 accessory structures, in 3.1 design principles that relates again to the narrow stitch development and guidelines in 4.5 uh, roofs, again, that relates to the narrow stitch pattern that we are looking at tonight. So does anyone at this point in time have any questions, discussion about what you have been given 
tonight for us to vote on. So I want to make sure everybody knows what we are voting on tonight. And we will do it, we'll do it item by item uh, that is on our agenda here. The only question I have is I noticed that we have left out garages altogether. No, we haven't. No, we, no, it's on the back of. Oh, it's on the back. It's on well, the no, back page. Turn the paper over, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Garages all together. See on the top. Two point six. <clears throat> yeah, two point six accessory structures. We talked about that on Monday. Garages are not appropriate in the type we development pattern. Is that what you were looking for? Oh, no, no. This I was looking for this back page. Uh, okay, okay, okay. He's, he's saving paper, and I'm wondering where they are. Okay, okay. He had mentioned there was something on the back. <laughs> oh, I have missed that. Okay. All right, let's go. All right, can we move on with what's on the front page? Okay. Does anybody have a question, comment about what's on the front page? Mm -mm. No. Okay, so hearing none... Uh, should we, Matt, should we vote on each of these things individually or agree on them as a whole and then vote? You, could, you can uh, do it however you want, but you can vote on the whole thing at once if you'd like. Okay. Well, we'll save time. So does anybody have comments about 2.1, the new development pattern? No. Does anybody have comment or concern about 2.6, accessory structures? Mm -mm. Does anybody have a comment or concern about 3.1 design principles? Hearing none. Does anyone have a concern or comment about 4.5 guidelines for us for this new development pattern? Hearing none. So just to be sure that we're really clear, this developmental pattern, which will go uh, in 2.1, will go at the beginning of the historic guidelines so that it will become one of the developmental patterns that are already there. For instance, pipe weave is already there. So that we want to make it absolutely clear that once this goes in the beginning of the guidelines, that all the other guidelines that go after that that are listed in the historic guidelines apply to this particular pattern. Okay. We're all clear on that, yes. right? This will be one of just the other ones that are in there. The only question I have is I would like to know what your definition of attached garage is. I'm still not clear on that. No attached garage. What is a, an attached garage? I know what he said no. it could be integral. But what, what would, how would you define a detached garage? Uh, we don't have a definition for it. Okay. So we're just saying each, each incidence will be valued at its own when it comes before us. Essentially, or, or you use the common, under, common, commonly understood definition. Okay. In either a dictionary or in society. It's commonly understood. That's what happens when you don't have a defined term. Okay. Plus, I think we have some pictures in our guidelines that illustrate yes, what an attached garage is. Okay, That's thank true. you. Okay, does that help you yes, with that? Yes, there's a photograph That's much and there's, a, there's an illustration. Okay. Good point. No. Not, at, not at this point. She asked, could she ask a question? I can grab that the motion. So, so just let us just let us finish here, okay? All right. So all of the items that we've got here, we've all agreed on, okay? And we will vote on that uh, in just a moment. So, Matt, do we want to go ahead and vote on it, and then let our one person who is in our audience ask the question, or do we want to take the question first? So. Um I guess only judging by the way the um, application process goes with the, for a COA, um, we generally take the comments from the public um, before the motion. Is that correct? If there's any, if there's any comments, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
for from the uh, from the public. Yes. Uh, yes, right. we, we do before we get to mm -hmm. the discussion and the vote. Okay. So that might be a good model to go by. Okay. All right. So your question is. And if you would at least. You would up come up to the microphone, microphone and identify yourself. Sarah Atherback, Go Architectural Design. I just have a quick question about the development pattern map. Do you, I mean, do you just, you just have a description of the development patterns and then you figure out where they are or do you have a map of those development patterns? We, we do not have a map. So figure out is, sounds more arbitrary than it is. It's pretty obvious when you look at lot lines or um, structures on would, an aerial. I was just thinking about Edgerton. That was the well, only because it's in a tight weave and that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Feel my pain. <laughs> okay. But at least right. you, but at least you go by the description of the pattern itself uh, uh, as, correct. Gui as guidance, but it is also a generalization. Well, it is and it's intentional because things change. And one day when we have more time, there's some obvious transformational areas that are between patterns that, that, depending on the application, could be put to one side of that line or the other. And, and so that's why we specifically don't have a boundary. Okay. Thank you. You certainly well. It, it's, it's better for the applicants that way. <laughs> okay. So at this point, do I have a motion to accept the front and back of these uh, guidelines to update our historic guidelines. Madam Chair, I move that we adopt 2.1, developmental patterns, narrow stitch, 2.6, accessory structures, 3.1, design principles, and 4.5, guidelines for roofs into the historical district guidelines that governs this board. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, hearing none, the guidelines pass. So the next step with these guidelines will be that they will go tomorrow. Yes. To planning and zoning. Correct. To, in, um, to, into their packet. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it will go through planning and zoning. For their and then meeting on October 1st? I thought you first said Tuesday. First Tuesday. First Tuesday. Tuesday. I thought they was, that's last night they said the second Tuesday. You said second, yeah. The 12th? That, that's what, no, the first and, and if I may, the Board of Aldermen and Planning and Zoning is supposed to have a combined meeting in the month of October, so. It must be later than. No, it's there. It's planning and zoning's first meeting. Okay. Well, uh, at okay. any rate, the uh, let's see. The meeting. Uh, the deadline is uh, essentially tomorrow. They're sending the packet out to the planning and zoning members on Friday. Right. So the meeting is the sixth of October. October. The first Tuesday. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. And then, right. so that's a combined meeting. So it will go. To planning and zoning, and then at that meeting, it will go in front of the board of aldermen. Oh, I don't know about that. I, uh, okay. I don't think so because the isn't on the alderman's agenda. Okay, so at some point, right after that, it will get on the board of aldermen. That's correct. At the okay. um, the thirteenth, there's a deadline for the uh, for the next alderman's meeting that uh, for for the packet for the alderman's meeting. For them to call a public meeting and then after they so that'll be one meeting and then it goes to their next meeting so it's two meetings um, to actually have it uh, for them to consider action okay all right so that will be the process that uh, what we have passed today will go through to the Board of Aldermen, and then when, whenever we know that that's going to happen, Matt will go and present this to the Board of Aldermen, and then once it's, it's approved there, then it will officially be put into our guidelines. Okay? Does anybody have anybody have anything else to say at this time? Okay? We have uh, dealt with our one item on the agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We got you out of here, Jerry. Jerry's done. <laughs> we are adjourned.